Right then, hopefully you recognise that as Right Next Door because of me. Uh, probably my favourite Robert Cray song, although I'll probably say that about all of the songs that I'm uh, going to sort of show you snippets of in this Robert Cray series. So great song, great lyrics, it's, it's funky, it's soulful, it's got jazz vibes in it, it's poppy, it's, oh, it's got everything, I absolutely love it. And a beautiful lilty rhythm guitar, and that's what I'm going to teach you today, the rhythm guitar bits. So we're going to put all those together, um, and the particular song's all about Robert Cray, um, I think he's making love to a woman, uh, and then her husband um, obviously finds out and he's actually in the room next door when he, she's having it out with him or he's having it out with her very upset because of Rob, young Bob because uh, he's a strong persuader and obviously she, he didn't care because it was just another notch on his guitar uh, which got me thinking uh, so I've, I've picked up this and I can't find a notch anywhere on this old yoke unfortunately you know, a few scrapes and bumps and bruises and chunks out of it where I've dropped it but no notches for me unfortunately obviously I'm not a strong enough persuader or obviously not as cool as Robert Cray. Okay then, without any much ado, let's quickly run through all the little bits for you. So we're going to start off with the intro, which is just played uh, four down strokes. Letting the notes ring out. Does that four, time, four times, and that's an E flat five chord. And basically we're playing first fret of the D, which is an E flat note, playing the third fret of the G, which is a B flat note, and then playing an E flat note, which is the fourth fret of the E. And we're just simply playing those four times. That's all there is to the intro. I wasn't quite sure he's playing it on the neck, so I looked it up and I saw him playing it live and see, saw that's how, what he's doing. And I'm actually muting the top string there, uh, the top E, so that doesn't ring out, because they're the only three notes we need. Then we come on to the verse. Okay, so all the verses are the same, and they go like this. Okay, and what we're doing, we're playing a C minor chord, okay? Playing the full C minor chord, but only concentrating on the D, G, and B strings, okay? So you can play the full chord here, so just quickly run through that eighth fret um, of the uh, bottom E, and then the A and D on the tenth fret, and then we've got the eighth fret of the G, B, and E strings, but only concentrating on like that. It doesn't matter if you play the other notes, but because he does sometimes put the odd note and high note in, but he's just playing. Then we're going to come to the E flat chord. Now, we're not playing a full E flat chord here, we're just playing three notes. We are playing, uh, playing basically on the eighth fret of the D, G and B. That's all he's doing. Now, um, I think when I was playing earlier, I just accidentally made a little little bummy note there, accidentally hit that A because I wasn't muting that A. So I just rest my uh, fingers on when I'm on the frets there, just using the fingers across those uh, eighth fret of D, G and B and mute that so it doesn't, doesn't sound out and the same as the top E there. Then it goes up and to the F chord. So we're just basically going up two frets and we're playing the tenth fret of the D, G and B. Exactly the same. I, I, I might find it easier, I just tend to sort of like use my pinky on this one, but you can go like that if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, so just sliding your fingers up or do what I do that. But still concentrating on the D, G and B strings. Then it goes back down to the E flat again, okay? And then it goes back to a very quick change there, which goes from B flat to C minor, okay? And the B flat chord, I'm playing that fully because it, you probably can put a few more notes into that, which I'll show you in a minute. And the B flat chord, in case you don't know, we're basically on the sixth fret bottom E, and then eighth fret A and D, and then we're on the seventh fret G, and then the sixth fret B and D. And that's all you need to know for that particular bit. Okay, now let's play it through a few times for you so you can sort of get the, get the lilt of it. Here we go. all there is to it. Now, rhythm-wise, it's very difficult hearing him play it in the studio with his overdubs and hearing him play it live, he just feels his way through it. He just feels his way through it. All I can say to you is that for the technique-wise, he's using his fingers um, on, the, on the fretting hand to damp, to release the pressure, so he gets this sort of... like that sort of... 
-huh. like that. So there's no strict rhythm pattern to it, but you know, if you can just feel something like that. There's gaps all over the place. That's the only bit when I'm playing a slightly fuller chord, which he doesn't sometimes, okay? So that's, that's the verses for you. Then there's a bit at the end of the verses, which, uh, so let's call it a bridge. Um, and when all he's playing is two chords. He's playing the B flat chord again. Well, in fact, he's not playing the chord. I'm playing it, first of all, because he doesn't play it on the record. It just goes like that. So all we're doing, we're playing a B flat chord and we're hitting the D, G and top E strings like that. And the basically the notes that we're playing is we're, we're, so we're on the eighth fret of the D, uh, we're on the seventh fret of the G and the sixth fret of the E. And then we go up to the C minor chord, which you know how to play already, and we're playing exactly the same, D, G, E. Like that, that's all there is to it. Now, on the record, he doesn't play it at all. He doesn't actually um, uh, play any chords before, but so you've got a couple of options here. You can just really go like that, or you can go, or you can go, so playing a bit of rhythm to it and going, it's more difficult to do that. But leave that entirely up to you. So that's the bridge. I think he plays it once the first time round and then twice the second time round. Then we come to the chorus. Uh, when he was right next door, he was a strong persuader. And this is again, it's nice easy chords there, but there's a little, little uh, extra bit I'm going to show you as well. So the, this bit goes like this. I didn't play it right well. <laughs> Do it again. Play it far too fast. Far too fast. Okay, this is the chorus. Like that. So all we're literally doing is playing uh, an A flat chord, a B flat chord, and a C minor chord. And he's just running up that scale. And as we haven't done the A flat chord again, uh, we're at basically fourth fret bottom E, sixth fret e, A, sixth fret D, and then we're going uh, on to G, uh, fifth fret G, and then the uh, fourth fret B and E. And he's playing it in more sort of like more open chords. And in between, uh, on the first and third time he plays it, he goes. Like that. Now, Good thing I do know about this, when I see him play it live, he goes more. And on the record, it's an overdub. So it's quite difficult to actually get to keep playing the rhythm. And he doesn't play it again. Third time round. That's all there is to it. Now, the lead bit. It's. And what he's doing is playing, we're starting off on the eighth fret of the D and going to the tenth fret of the D. Then we're going off to the eighth fret of the G. Like that. Then we're going back down to the tenth fret of the D again. Back down to the eighth fret of the D. So we have. Back to the tenth fret of the D and then back up to the eighth fret of the G. Sorry, like that. And what he's doing, every time he plays the note, he's releasing his, quickly the pressure on his hands, so it's very staccatoed, which is typical Robert Cray, like that. Okay, and there we have the, the choruses for you. Very, very simple. And then finally, before the great lead solo comes in, um, we have another set of chords. So the last line of the chorus goes like this. Then we have a bit that leads into the lead solo. Slightly different timing there, sorry. Apologies for that, but I'll quickly run through it again for you in a minute when I've shown you the chords, okay? So, 
what we're doing here after we've on the C minor, we're going to play the full E flat chord that I showed you early. Okay, then it's going back up to the C minor chord, like that. Okay, so it's a count of four on each, so it's sort of like two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then back down to the B flat, and there's a count of two on that, I think. So back to the B flat chord, and then count of two on an A flat chord. So what we have so far is one, two, let's do it correctly first. So yes, that is correct. Ha. One, two, three, four, C minor. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. On the G we're going, and it launches into the chorus again. like that and that's what the lead solo is played over so let's just do it one more time then so the G chord is the bottom chord so basically just to re recap in case you don't know we've got a, a third fret on the E fifth fret A fifth fret D and then we've got a fourth fret on the G and then second fret B second fret E so it's just what we will do I'll play the last line of the chorus and then we'll go into that that little bit before the solo Here we go. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then straight back into the uh, chorus again, which he plays the lead solo over, and then there's another verse and a fade out on the chorus. So, uh, and a bridge and a fade out on the chorus. And that's all the component parts you need uh, to be able to play this fantastic song. I suggest you go to YouTube, have a listen to it, put your own rhythm and your own style and feel to it. I'm sure you'll have really, really good fun doing that. So I had good fun learning that. I only learned that today, that one, this song. So it, it was quite a challenge to get that done before I got dragged into this sweltering studio to record. Must get to uh, invest in some nice air conditioning. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, waffling again. So there we have it. So that's the second part of our four part Robert Cray series. And in the next one, I'll be showing you three or four great little licks that are part of his solo. So catch you soon. Ciao for now.